can get done pretty quickly. And it's still going to be good, still going to have a lot of good flavor to it. And I'm going to share one of those recipes that I like to do at home with you guys. So what I have here is I have uh, chicken tenders. And um, when you're using chicken tenders, these are boneless, skinless tenders. They're really easy, but they do have a little bit of trimming to do. There's this nice tendon throughout. And what I like to do when I'm cleaning my chicken tenders, just using a, a towel, hold on to that and scrape right down. You get rid of that tendon. No one wants to eat that anyway. So I've already prepared a handful of these. I'm going to knock out a couple more. We're going to use these tenders. We're going to season them up. And then we're going to bake them in the oven because we've got quite a bit. We can saute them if we want. But um, baking them in the oven works pretty well. It's going to take about 15 minutes or so in a 400 degree oven. And bear with me. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions of Mike, you want to ask him something about the utensils he's using, some skills he may have out there that he's developed over the years, please just raise your hand. We'll bring the mic over to you. Absolutely. So I have a half sheet pan, and I'm going to lay out the chicken. As I said, folks, this is a pretty simple recipe. Mike, I'm assuming you're not making uh, 40 of these at home for yourself. That's, uh, your, well, you know, uh, it's, it's surprising because when I do cook, I, like to, um, uh, I do like to go to the, uh, the, the local Sam's Club and... Um, these are usually a pretty good deal. And when I do cook, uh, this is a recipe that really holds together pretty well. So if you're cooking for a family of four, if you're cooking for you know, two people, you can make a recipe like this and it freezes very well. Mm. This one works really well for office potlucks because uh, once it's cooked and prepared, you can go ahead and set it out in a crock pot and it, uh, it holds up very well. So I have the chicken laid out here on my sheet pan, if I can get it all out. And then I'm going to season it really simply. Thank you. I have uh, five seasonings that I'm going to use here. We're going to start with a little bit of black pepper, some coarse ground black pepper, a little bit of kosher salt, why kosher salt, Mike? I hear that on a lot of, uh, of cooking shows as opposed to sea salt or table salt. Um, kosher salt, it has a little bit uh, better crunch. Uh, it's, that's what I've been told. It's, as, I, as I look at um, recipes online, they generally call for kosher salt. They generally, uh, the cooking videos, they, uh, they generally call for the kosher salt. So I, I just always have it on hand at, at the house. Um, it's easier to use than, um, like, say, table salt. Table salt has a tendency to come out a little too fast, a little too... Um, I tend to overuse table salt right. when I'm using table right. salt in a recipe. I also have here some granulated garlic. And I like granulated garlic for recipes like this because um, it's not as messy mm -hmm. as uh, fresh garlic, and it still has a lot of good flavor. And then some granulated onion as well, again, for the same reasons. And then the last seasoning that I'm going to go ahead and put on here is a little bit of dried epizote. And epizote is a Mexican herb. Um, if you don't have epizote, you can use oregano. That works pretty well. And this really adds a little extra to it, because um, I find when I'm cooking, one of the biggest lessons that I learned was using herbs and, and making sure that your seasoning was appropriate. So. Um, I like the episode because it does add that little Mexican flair. It does add a little bit something extra. Uh, if you, you know, of course, if you take this to a potluck, people are going to wonder what, what makes that special. Uh, this is what makes my recipe special for, for the chicken tacos. So as you notice here, the, um, I'm not being very particularly careful with the seasoning. I just want to make sure it gets into the sheet pan because we're going to bake these in the oven, and then we're going to chop them up and then uh, saute them up in the pan with a little bit of um, with a little bit of our sauce. So I want to make sure these are a nice level one flat layer so they'll cook evenly. 
and we'll get these in the oven. Thank you very much. Those are going to go into a 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes or so. Chicken tenders cook fairly consistently. And then while we're waiting for the chicken to cook, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the rest of the recipe here. So let me turn on my saucepan. We're going to put it up to medium. with a little bit of oil. Does it matter what kind of oil? Uh, for this recipe, no, not particularly. You can use extra virgin olive oil if you have it. Uh, you're usually, uh, if you're gonna saute anything, and we're gonna saute this onion, uh, if you're using extra virgin olive oil, it's really not worth the expense. Uh, extra virgin olive oil is great when you're using it to finish a dish, you get that extra flavor. But if you're just cooking with it, you can use any type of vegetable oil, Wesson or, or canola oil. You're not looking for anything in the flavor profile no. from the oil, just to keep it from sticking to the pan. Right, just a, just a heat transfer and just to keep it from, um, uh, keep the onions moving around. So with my onions, I'm going to do a nice rough dice. This is everybody's punishment for, uh, for getting free food. You get to watch me cut onions. I think it'll be worth it. Hopefully. There we go. And when I cut onions, I like a little trick that I learned from watching uh, all the cooking shows. Keeping the onions whole and cutting into them or cutting the onions in half and cutting them a couple of ways sideways, a couple of ways up and down, so that when you go ahead and cut, the onion is already diced. You don't have to go chasing around little pieces. Anyone else in the audience do that? Is that anybody's preferred, the old French style? So you didn't go to culinary school, but you that's an old culinary school trick. Very you know, good. Uh, it's years of watching America's Test Kitchen and uh, the Frugal Chef or Frugal Gourmet, uh, the old Julia Child episodes. Um, I've never been to culinary school, but I love watching cooking television. Another America's Test Kitchen fan. I didn't know there were many of us out there, but that's a, that's a fantastic show. All right, so I have my onion nicely diced throughout the root ends here. Now I'm using a whole white onion here, and it seems like a lot. And when you use onions, um, they're, they're one of my favorite vegetables to use um, because they are so versatile. When you're using them raw, they have that that really um, almost aggressive flavor to them. But when you cook with them and you start developing the, uh, get them nice and caramelized, the sugars that come through really, really change the way that they taste and they really add a lot to a dish. Did you use a specific kind of onion? Spanish, Vidalia, sweet? This is just a white onion you can get at any grocery store. And, uh, just keep it moving through the pan. You want to let it get nice and golden brown. And that'll take probably, I don't know, five minutes, six minutes. I'll kick the heat up a little bit. Does anybody have any questions? Anyone? Let me come your way, ma'am. And I'll get to you next, sir. Yes, ma'am. Where do you get Episode? Where do you get Episode? You can get it. Um, this one that I have, I actually got from the North Market. There's a little spice shop in the North Market. You can get it online. Uh, go online to Amazon.com or any uh, Penzi Spices or any, any bigger spice shop. Again, if you don't have Episodi, you can always use oregano. All right. Thanks. Yes, sir. That was yours, too? All right. Very good question. Okay. So far, I think we're following you pretty well, but that one threw everybody off, me included. A little bit. That was a good answer. All right. Anything else? Anyone have any questions? You just want to eat? Just want to eat? I think it's unanimous. They just want to eat. 
Anything else we're going to saute? Anything else we're going to chop up, dice up? This is a pretty simple recipe. So it's just going to be the, um, the onions, the chicken, and then we're going to finish it all off with, uh, with some of the Wicked Cactus sauce. Um, we, we call it the Viva La Raza. It is a, a tomatillo, jalapeno, and serrano pepper sauce. Mm. It's a nice mild heat, uh, but it does have a lot of great flavor. And um, the reason I'm using this is because uh, another lesson I learned as a home cook is that um, if you're wondering why your food doesn't taste like a restaurant quality food does, you're probably missing one of the main components. And what I was always missing when I was cooking, uh, I had butter under control. I had salt under control. It was acid. And a lot of people don't realize that acid really adds to foods, foods that you wouldn't think need it. Uh, so using lime juice, lemon juice, a little dash of vinegar at the end as you're finishing cooking really helps open up flavors, really helps make your food come alive. Mike, another question here That's in right. the back, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, how did you get into making sauces instead of just keeping with recipes and like developing a recipe book? Sure. Um, well, I was always into hot and spicy foods uh, since I was a teenager. Uh, about uh, 20 years ago, I picked up my first bottle of Dave's Insanity sauce, and uh, it's been off and running since then. Um, so I've been a collector of hot sauces. I've been attending hot sauce shows. Um, I just really just totally dove in about uh, five years ago and started attending the, the major hot sauce shows um, like Zest Fest and uh, like the Albuquerque show in, in uh, the Fiery Food Show in New Mexico. And uh, about three years ago, I came back from the Albuquerque show with some uh, products that I had picked up. And I brought them into my day job where my business partner worked. And we came in and tried a couple of different hot sauces. He was the only one either smart enough or, uh, or brave enough or, or dumb enough in the office to try those sauces with me. And he had worked in the kitchen. Um, he had worked in kitchens for about 20 years or so. And he tried some of the products, and he thought he could come up with something just as good. So I gave him some of my uh, smoked habaneros that I had been using in my kitchen, and he came back with some, uh, a sauce about five days later that ended up being our first sauce, the Headhunter's Paradise. So we've been off and running since then, collaborating and, and, and getting different recipes. So we now have nine different flavors of sauces that, um, that we sell. And, Mike, you are a, uh, a St. Louis guy, a Missouri guy. St. Louis. Not, Not exactly the, the hot and spicy food capital of the Midwest. Right. You know, we have a lot of Italian influence in St. Louis, um, mainly known for toasted ravioli. Uh, that's the big the big takeaway from St. Louis, uh, culinary-wise. So, yeah, not, not a lot of hot and spicy going on in St. Louis. But, uh, you know, if, you find, if you're looking for it, you can go out there and you can find it at great shows like, like Zest Fest here. And uh, I'm sure, as you guys know, you're not going to find a lot of hot and spicy at, um, at most restaurants. But uh, if you go out looking for it, you can't find it. Any other questions from our crowd? If you have anything, just raise your hand. We'll bring you the mic. Any other, uh, what other awards have we seen? We saw from ILoveItSpicy.com. Sure. What else? Well, uh, we won our first award in 2010 from the New Orleans Hot Sauce Show uh, for the Viva La Raza. It's one of the best uh, green sauces in the, uh, at the show. We've also won another award from I Love It Spicy in 2011 for our Ghost of the Samurai. It was uh, voted the best teriyaki of 2011. It's a spicy teriyaki with ghost pepper, so it's going to be substantially hotter than what I'm going to serve to you guys today. I don't want anybody having to leave here on a stretcher. Stretchers are standing by, right. if anybody's wondering. We've also won um, for our salsa, Sangre del Sol. We won the 2011 Jungle Gems People's Choice Award for Best Salsa. So we've, we've, uh, we've come a little ways in the, in the three years that we've been in business. We've won some, some nice awards and... Uh, and we're continuing to grow. You mentioned earlier your, uh, your day job. Do you still have that, or are you now working two full-time 40-hour jobs, basically? You know, the, uh, the hot sauces, uh, there's only a few folks that I know of in, in the hot sauce industry that have this as a full-time job. Um, I still have a full-time day job. This is more of a uh, vacation job for me. I, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's relatively low profile for, for Wicked Cactus Sauce. We, uh, we're working out of my house. That's mm -hmm. the storeroom and, and, and uh, headquarters. 
We cook all of our sauces out of a certified kitchen, but um, everything else is done. We don't have a storefront. We don't have a production facility. We rent a kitchen, and, and it's, it's pretty small. So yeah, my day job, uh, anybody has student loans out there? You're probably talking to me at some point. For better or for worse, I, I don't see anybody leaving, so I guess that's okay. <laughs> I don't know, don't know if I would pursue that any further. Let's just right. move on with the food. So the onions here, they're, they're starting to sizzle a little bit. What we're really looking for is them to develop a nice golden color. Because when you see it starting, to, they start, well, they're, right now they're a little bit translucent. And when they, um, when they start getting golden, you know that the sweetness of the onion is coming out. And that's really what we're looking for for this recipe. Mike, if you would, take us through the uh, production, the cooking of the Viva La Rasa sauce. What, what goes into it? Sure. What do you do? Sure. It is, um, like most hot sauces, it's, uh, it starts with, with peppers. And we're using jalapenos and serrano peppers. We're doing a little bit of tomatillo for some added body and a little bit of tartness. Uh, it is... A little bit of cumin, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt. It's got a nice level of heat. It's uh, the mildest sauce that Wicked Cactus does produce. Uh, it is um, pretty accessible for anybody. So it's got a nice flavor that goes well with any type of Mexican food. But I also find that the uh, acidity of the, the sauce, the little vinegar bite to it, it really works well if you're doing anything that has a lot of fat content. So if you're doing pulled pork uh, or... Um, you know, ground beef, anything that can be a little bit heavier, when you use that acid, when you have that little tartness to it, it really helps open up flavors. And it's a green sauce, obviously, as right. we can see. And that's not a bad batch. It's supposed to be that color. That's correct. That's uh, the... Uh, what, what other peppers do you use in your product line? We use a lot of habanero because uh, it is my one of my favorite peppers. Uh, it's also pre relatively prevalent. You can get it pretty much everywhere. Um, I love the fruitiness of the habanero pepper. We have started getting into some more of the exotic peppers. I have a, a pretty extensive garden in my backyard. I tore out my entire uh, city lot and replaced it with raised beds. So we're growing seven pot peppers, Carolina reapers, you name it, all the super hots that are difficult to get a hold of. So my onions are coming up here. I'm going to go ahead and check up on my chicken. And chicken needs just a little bit more time. Now in a 400 degree oven, that's going to get done a lot quicker than the normal, I'm thinking. At 400 degrees, the chicken tenders should come out in about 15 minutes or so. Um, but uh, we'll see. With the, with a, uh, the uh, stoves that we have, the oven that we have here, I've not practiced with it. So it might, might be a little longer. We're going to use the, um, the oven to cook the chicken through. Then we're going to add the chicken back to the, uh, back to the skillet with the sauce to help. The heat will help open up the chicken, and it'll help penetrate and marinate. Any Other 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 products, other products available. You talked about the habanero sure. sauce and the, the Viva La Rasa. Uh, we have nine different products, nine different hot sauces. Uh, the Viva La Rasa is the mildest. Still on the mild side, we have a smoking gun. It's uh, like a spicy barbecue. A little bit tangy, a little bit sweet, a little bit smoky. We also have the Wicked Cosa Nostra. I had mentioned earlier the uh, St. Louis toasted ravioli. The Wicked Cosa Nostra is our, our kind of nod to that. It's a spicy marinara, a marinara with tomatoes, fresh herbs, and uh, habanero kick. So yeah, a plate of toasted ravioli and some of that uh, Wicked Cosa Nostra goes very, very well. Getting into the more medium range, we have the Creole Demon. It's Wicked Cactus Sauce's take on Louisiana-style hot sauce. So cayenne, habanero, a little bit of clam juice for some extra flavor, mm. and then spices. We also have a couple of Thai pepper sauces with a little more Asian influence. Uh, Cobra Venom, fresh Thai peppers, coriander, lime juice, so it's got a nice brightness to it, a nice refreshing heat. And then we also use Thai peppers in Wrath of the Tiger. It is uh, dried Thai chilies, which have a completely different flavor profile than a fresh Thai chili. Whereas a fresh Thai pepper has got that nice brightness to it. When they're dried out, they have a little bit more uh, earthiness. And we're adding some sugar to that. Some horseradish, a little bit of ginger and garlic in our Wrath of the Tiger. 
Going up from there, we also have uh, the hotter sauces are the one that we started the company with, the smoked habanero and pineapple headhunter's paradise. It's a great sauce for grilling. We also do a uh, couple of ghost pepper sauces. Ghost of the Samurai, teriyaki with ginger, garlic, honey, and ghost pepper. And our Aliento del Diablo, which is the hottest sauce that we produce. It's a straight up pepper sauce with smoked ghost peppers, habaneros, fresnos, serranos, and a little bit of carrot to help round everything out. Carrot? S carrot. I must Absolutely. confess I was following everything you were saying that whole time until carrot. That's interesting. You know, you know carrots, they have a natural sweetness to them, so mm. they also have a nice body. When they're put into a sauce, it really adds a little bit of viscosity to the sauce, mm -hmm. adds a nice little sweetness. Um, yeah, and they, they, they just go really well with the, the fruit flavors from the habanero pepper. Let me double check on that chicken. Yeah, we're still running a little cool. Okay. It's all right. Tacos, yes, absolutely. We're going to be making tacos. And again, this is a, a simple recipe. Um, the filling that we're going to be making here with, with the chicken, with the onion, with the, uh, the Viva La Raza hot sauce, it goes really well with just about everything. Um, you can use it to make taco filling. Uh, you can make enchiladas. Um, you can use it on sandwiches. It really, um, it's pretty versatile. It's still got a, a nice, nice kick to it, but it's a heat that, um, again, you know, if you take it out to a potluck at your office, you're not gonna you're not gonna scare anybody away. All right. I think I think we're ready on that. Bring them on over. And yep. Thank you much. So I've got one of our chicken breasts, tenders, still a little pink. Let me throw these back in the oven here real quick. <laughs> Mike, what recipe was it that, uh, that you used to win the contest on iloveitspicy.com? Ooh, in the contest, I did a number of different recipes. Uh, the one that won, it was a three-part recipe. It was a tandoori lamb pizza. It was a it was it was an, a twist a twist on international foods. It was to take an American dish and make it international, to take an international dish and put an American twist on it, and then take one international dish and move it to another country. So my, my response was um, to take, I completely forgot what I did. International. international to international was a tandoori lamb, uh, marinated tandoori uh, style lamb. I don't have a tandoori cooker at home, so it was, of course, roasted in the oven and made a pizza with, uh, with a cilantro lime, uh, sorry, cilantro mint chutney. Mm. Uh, I took a... Uh, American take on uh, salad lanaise, which is uh, the French salad, uh, frisée lettuce, uh, bacon, croutons, and poached egg. And I added to that um, the American classic of chicken and waffles. So a savory waffle with the bacon cooked into it, hmm. uh, spicy chicken tenders. Uh, not these particular ones, but uh, a, a different version of spicy chicken tenders and uh, the poached egg, and then the apple pie egg roll. The, uh, the American Dish Goes International did an apple pie egg roll with, uh, with apple pie filling egg roll with Chinese five spice. Mm. All of those sound fantastic. So, yeah, if you guys are interested in, in checking on the contest that I did win the trophy for, you can always visit iloveitspicy.com, or you can visit uh, the YouTube page for Wicked Cactus Sauce. Just search for Wicked Cactus Sauce. You'll see all the videos from... Uh, from the eight different, was it eight? Six rounds. The six rounds of video contest from myself and from some of the other vendors. They're here today at Patter Fams. Uh, they were a part of the contest. 
uh, the spice yeah, sauce goddess, spice goddess, sauce goddess was uh, also part of the the contest. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of really good competitors, a lot of really good uh, dishes that were made throughout the contest, and none of the awkwardness of live presentations. <laughs> What else could we add to this? I mean, it, the, naturally, I'm thinking we want to throw in some some diced green peppers, maybe diced bell peppers. Absolutely. You know, this is this is just a, a simple way of doing it. Um, it. You can get as creative as you want. Uh, of course, if you're doing any type of uh, bell pepper, you know, um, you can add your own your own hot peppers to it. Uh, for what we're doing, it's just going to be pretty simple. You know, tortilla cheese filling. You can add whatever else you want. Um, when I do Mexican food, one thing that I do like to do a lot is uh, pickled red onion. Uh, but this one, because we've got a lot of acidity coming from the sauce itself, pickled red onion would be a little bit overkill for that. So, so we're going to skip that for this particular recipe. And I can tell you from walking around here at ZestFest Midwest, there's a lot of great stuff here from our product vendors that you could throw in here um, to spice up this dish. This is a Absolutely. wonderful dish just to experiment with. Uh, and to throw in, I'll talk about my friends at, uh, at RJ, spice it up over there with yeah, their pickled peppers. There. My gosh, that was some good stuff. The hot stuff, not that hot, but it's awesomely flavorful. Throwing some of that on will be good, too. Any of our vendors' products thrown on a chicken taco dish would just work wonderfully. In fact, if you've got products, when you get to sample, throw some of it on there while you're trying it out. Do a little experimenting while you're here at ZestFest. Buddha's asked me what my favorite recipe in the contest. Um, and I think the one that I really enjoyed the most would have been... Um, uh, the first round where we made, uh, we were provided with a couple of different instructions and ingredients for each round of the contest. The first round of the contest, Buddha provided us with uh, spicy jelly. And mine was a mango habanero jelly, and I used that to make a spicy gastrique. A uh, little bit of, reduce the jelly with a little bit of vinegar and use that on duck. And that would have been actually the first time that I had ever cooked duck. So I, uh, I really went out on a limb with that first round, trying something I'd never done on camera before. And actually, I think all of the recipes, save one, I had, uh, I'd never tried out before. So you're seeing a lot of me on camera going through, wondering if this is going to actually turn out well or not. And of course, with the time limit that we had with the contest, it was, uh, you know, you had one, one opportunity to shoot the video, and pretty much that was it especially if you're using a bunch of different ingredients, a bunch of different techniques. What about the ghost scorpion? The ghost scorpion pepper. Yeah, we did have one round for the ghost scorpion pepper. If you folks have not heard of it, it is perhaps the most um, aggressive pepper that I've ever tried. It's a cross between the ghost pepper and the Trinidad scorpion. And uh, refiningfirechilies.com is the the folks who, who have the ghost scorpion pepper and um, we were provided dried versions of it and uh, it, it is so potent it is very difficult to to work with because it's just so aggressive it's it's very hot very very powerful it very easily overpower a dish thank you very much so I use that one as um, as part of a spice rub for a pork belly that uh, that I cooked off on the smoker for a Vietnamese-style uh, noodle dish. So chickens come out of the oven, and at this point it looks nice. I'm going to go ahead and pull the chicken pieces off onto my cutting board. I can't begin to tell you how good that smells. Uh, and it, it's, it's that spice. Dana says it's, right. it's, it's your Mexican spice. It was called what again? The Episode. Episode. Boy, does that make a difference. That is incredible. You're going to like this. It's, it smells heavenly. So Buddha, I'm going to smell it over here. It's good, good thumbs up from you. God, it smells good. Woo. 
I'm going to take the chicken and set it over here. And then with the juices that have come off the chicken, there's still a lot of flavor going on there. I don't want to throw that out. So I'm going to get the chicken off to the side, and we're going to put those juices back into the pan that we have with the onions. We're going to get up some of those little brown bits of the onion. That would be great. Thank you. Do you need to deglaze uh, a flat pan like that, or are you just going to pour it in? I'm just going to pour it in. It's uh, still, I've taken it off of the heat, but it's still a lot of, uh, to prevent the onions from overcooking, but it's still got a lot of, a lot of carryover heat still with it. And using the, the, the juices from the chicken, from the pan, you know, not only are we getting a lot of that good chicken flavor, but it's also a lot of the spices and seasonings that, um, that have come off into that pan. I'm a big proponent when I am cooking at home, if, I am, if I'm doing whole chickens or if I'm doing any type of, of meat with a bone, of, of hanging on to those and making stock. Um, so as, as Buddha and I were talking earlier, the, uh, when I made the, the duck, using the bones from the duck afterwards to make a duck stock and then using that throughout the contest, you know, it's, it's easy. Uh, you know, you take the bones, you take the normal trimmings if you're doing a whole chicken, the little wing tips that really don't have a whole lot of meat on them, but they do still have a lot of flavor when you cook them down. And uh, making stock, freezing it, using it for a later date. I absolutely love doing that when I'm at home. Nice Sunday afternoon. Save some money, too. Stock's not a, a cheap thing. And, you know, when you make your own stock, you really get an opportunity to, um, to play with flavors. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, most, most stocks you get at the grocery store, they're going to have a lot of salt, not a lot of flavor. Uh, by using it, making it your own, you really get a chance to enhance those flavors um, with herbs, with, with seasonings, with spices. And maybe when you're cooking that duck or that chicken or those veggies to make the stock, you pour in a couple of squirts of uh, wicked cactus in there. You know, absolutely. So I've, uh, I've taken the juices from the chicken and some of those little bits that have been cooked down onto the, uh, the pan here, put them back into the pan with my onion. I'm going to kick that heat back up a little bit and let that reduce down just a tiny amount. A lot of chicken. I was going <laughs> to mention Dana acting as our sous chef there. That's uh, that's about four coops worth of chicken right there. I think. Yeah, this is about five pounds worth of chicken tenders. So there's quite a bit of it. Now you don't have to use uh, the the oven to cook this. You can also do this in the stove uh, on the stove top in a saucepan, um, in a frying pan. Uh, I just like to do this if we're doing five pounds of it. Doing it in the oven really makes a whole lot of sense. Which do you prefer if you have your, you have to make the call, frying pan, skillet, oven? You know, with, uh, with boneless, skinless chicken, it's really just personal preference. Um, I like using the oven. It's, um, it's one of the differences that you get with, uh, with a kitchen, with a, I'm ready. Yes. Um, one of the big differences is, you know, most of the time a commercial kitchen is going to have everything running at the same time. You're right. going to have a deep fat fryer. You're going to have an oven. You're going to have a stove. So you're able to do a lot of those different preparations that a home cook really, unless you're really invested in it, uh, you know, having four burners running, having the oven running at the same time. Um, it's just something you don't get a whole lot of opportunity to do. I'm guessing a grill would not be optimal for this because that flavor would drip down through the grates. You know, you can use a grill. The... the the problem with chicken tenders on the grill is they have a tendency to, to overcook almost immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, you go from, from undercooked to overcooked with, uh, with a shocking speed. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can definitely do it on the grill. Uh, you just got to make sure you're paying attention. And the chicken has been just roughly chopped. And, again, this is something that if you were, if you were to do ahead of time and put into a crock pot, it makes a really great... Great meal, freeze it, you know, make a large batch and freeze it. And this is the Viva La Raza sauce. Viva La Raza, absolutely. 
You're going to dump a whole bottle in that uh, skillet. Well, we're going to do three bottles in this skillet. Oh, my skillet. gosh. But you said this isn't that hot. It's so not we're that okay. hot. But we do also have a lot of chicken. So five pounds of chicken, three bottles of sauce. That's five pounds it. of chicken, three bottles of sauce. And that's one thing that I love doing. I love cooking with hot sauce because too often people, you know, it's in the pantry. You don't realize it until you've halfway eaten a pizza. And then you're like, yeah, this needs a little something extra. I like cooking with hot sauce um, just because there's so much different flavors that you get when you cook with peppers. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of cooking with peppers because they're, one thing I will say is don't fry any type of habanero on the house unless you really don't want anybody else to be in there because uh, it will, it will, you know, vaporize and get in, er, get in your eyes, get in your lungs. That's, uh, that's a lesson that a lot of us have learned the hard way. But um, with hot sauce in a skillet like this, it's not going to be an issue. So I'm just going to work this around. I'm also breaking up the chicken just a little bit. And there we go. We're going to be ready to plate this up here in just a second. Chicken's fully cooked. The onions are fully cooked. The hot sauce is just warming up. Make sure I get all those onions up from the bottom. Incorporated fully with the chicken. Get that hot sauce worked all the way through. Got a couple of flour tortillas over here. Just a little dab of cheese. Kind of cheese at all? Any kind? No, this is just a, a store bought Mexican shreds. Again, keeping it a simple recipe, something you guys can do at home. Uh, if you've got block cheese at home, absolutely. Go for whatever cheese that you prefer. But this one, just a nice, simple um, Monterey Jack shreds. And there we go. Chicken tacos featuring Wicked Cactus Sauce Viva La Raza. Fantastic. Thanks, folks. Thanks, Mike. Stay where you are, everybody. We're going to bring out the sampling trays here in a second. They turn out good? Absolutely. Mouthful, good sign. Hold tight. We'll bring them out. We're going to have more cooking demonstrations Man BQ coming up at 5 o'clock with ribs for everybody. That's going to come up at 5. Mike Eisenberg from Wicked Cactus Sauces, award-winning Wicked Cactus Sauces. Mike, congratulations, and thank you so thank much you, folks. from here at Zest Fest. We'll have the sampling trays out in just one second, folks, and hang around. Ribs coming up at 5.